Okay, everybody, welcome back to our High Fleet preparation for 1.14 um, gameplay where we're doing a lot of planning, a lot of putting together our fleet, but I think it's a fun thing to do, especially like with sticking to a doctrine and stuff. I was going to just kick off and do the rest of these videos over the weekend, but I had some recording issues, and while I was kind of struggling with that, I came across all the submissions that people across the community had actually made for me to look at for this campaign, as well as just the suggestions that were coming through on the YouTube comments, and I really wanted to just take a, take a breath, step back, and address that stuff. I think it's really, really cool. So first of all, just thank you to everybody who submitted something, be it a comment that I've replied to in a YouTube video, or uh, like Blinky here, who's gone through and done a whole ton of work on a whole submission catalog of ships they want me to check out and, and think about before going into the campaign. Now I'm only covering three people's ships in this video, it's just the ones that I had access to before I could start. So if you have submitted something and I am not covering it here, I apologize. I do want to cover it, I just maybe haven't got any screenshots to go through at the moment or I maybe missed the comment and if I have I'm, I'm really sorry. I will be doing more of these videos if people want to continue suggesting ships to me as I go through my, my fleet preparation, so I look forward to seeing what other suggestions people have. Uh, for this video, I want to have a look at ships designed by uh, Butcher or Blinky ATX, Azura Von Kayser, and Triffler. Um, Blinky ATX is the guy I want to have a look at first, and just so you know, the stats that I'm going to be comparing these ships to are the stats that I have for the Audacity. So when I say that this ship has greater range or less range, it's in comparison to the Audacity ship that I built in the last YouTube video. Uh, the first ship that has been submitted by Blinky or Butcher, I'm going to call you Butcher for this video, is his sort of quick take on an Audacity cover. Uh, you can see straight away that they have very similar speeds and this ship, all the ships that Blinky built were built before I released my video. So he was going off what I said in my after action report video where my target speed was about 500 kilometers per hour and I wanted the two D80 Molots. Now the final ship I went with had uh, 788 kilometers per hour as its top speed and it had two AK-100s and that came after a lot of me thinking and going through the design process but these ships have been built towards that idea. This is the skull, and it definitely has a skullish theme to it. If you look at it, you can kind of see the face in it. Um, the big takeaways from this ship, it has flares like the um, the Lightning. It only has two flares, whereas we're running, so not the Lightning, the Audacity, whereas we're running four, but it has a full coverage of Palash, which just helps it out if it takes a hit. We've got a mixture of standard hull um, and reinforced hull, which are these gray areas here, which just help it survive a little bit more damage than the Audacity can take. And this whole outer layer acts as an ablative layer of armor, where there's no essential components stored in this structure, which means it can be blown away by the likes of proximity fuse ammo and not worry about any damage to the ship. Uh, one theme you're going to see a lot with Blinkies, with Butcher's ships, with Butcher's designs, is the use of this um, hull piece that has the corner cut away. You can see the repeated use of it all the way through this build. And the reason for that is that this armor pierce, armor piece, wow, I can't speak tonight, um, weighs two tons less than the standard box armor. So you are saving a little bit of weight with each use of it, two tons a time. Um, it does add up when you've used, I think, 12 pieces, you've saved an entire whole piece worth of weight. So there is a return on your investment. Um, for me personally, I'm quite big on my aesthetics for my ships, which is why I have used square hull pieces, even though it's inefficient. Um, but that's besides the point. The ship is very effective. Let's just go through the other stuff that the ship has. Um, I'm going off his notes as well. He's been very kind to write up notes on the ships as well. So this ship has five seconds more combat time than the Audacity. Um, it's fully crew compliant, whereas my ship is not, and it has slightly more thrust. But it's a little, it's not quite as good on the, th uh, the thrust to weight ratio. We've got a better, we've got 8.8, 8.8, it's got 7.8, which gives us a little bit more jump when we boost. Um, it weighs more, it's a little bit slower, it's got slightly less range, um, it doesn't have any missiles, it doesn't have any extinguishers, which I think is very risky, and you could put some in the exterior hull here and, and not really lose too much, um, and it has no evac pods and less flares like I mentioned before. It is um, roughly 7,000 credits or gold more expensive. I think this ship would do extremely well in the role that it's set out for it. I also think that having the four thrusters towards the center mass of the ship will give it really good um, thrust in lateral directions going up, down, left and right when needed to to dodge shots. I think it's a really good design. The only thing for me, and it's really tiny nitpick point, is the aesthetics of it. Um, but it actually also has its own aesthetics in a way. It does look like a teeth, like a toothy skeleton, which I quite like. Um, the next ship that he's designed that he was thinking about was the Squat, which is a ship that looks very similar to the Final Audacity. Um, it's very close in design and it makes good use of 
um, component shapes to just kind of fit everything in really, really neatly. So you can see the four fuel tanks are snugged into the center of the ship, and, and it follows my design philosophy as well of just there's just no armor at all. If the ship gets hit, it's going out. It also looks like it's been built very similar to the lightning design. If you look at the bridge and the hull component next to it, that's very evocative of how the lightning has been built and how it's designed. Um, this ship, it, it has some big downsides to it, and that's something that uh, Butcher has addressed. The biggest of this being that that bridge is very exposed. Any shots on the top of the ship have a chance to instantly kill it. Um, but if you're fl attacking from above, you've got quite a lot of sort of a blade of hull to get through before you get to the bridge, so you'd, you'd have to think about where you're fighting from. In terms of what this ship has over the Audacity, it has a longer range. You can go 600 kilometers further. Um, it weighs 108 tons less. It has an extra minute of combat time, which is very huge. And it a, is crew compliant, and it costs 2,200 credits less, which is not a small amount of money. Um, downsides, no flares, no missiles. It has only one extinguisher, and obviously it has that exposed bridge. So it's, it's an interesting experiment into, I would think this is an experiment into what can we get away with in terms of protection for the cheap, and still have a very high speed. And I have to say, I maybe didn't mention it before, 701 kilometers per hour on a ship with this much reinforced armor is impressive to pull off. It's not something I've been able to do when I've been trying to design these ships. Um, but this is like the other side of that exploration, the squat. And I think the only problem with the end design with this ship is that exposed bridge. Um, and you could move things around a little bit. I think you could maybe juggle you could risk putting that ammo box up at the top and put the bridge down. It's not ideal, but at least the bridge is slightly more protected. But it's 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 a ship that you're going to be flying by the seats of your pants for. Um, and you could easily add those zeniths in if you wanted to, like I did by bolting them onto the side. It's another great design, and it's really cool to see someone take the lightning as... It clearly looks like the lightning was the inspiration for the ship, especially with that bridge hull component layout. So it's, it's another great design. Um, the next ship that... Uh, Butcher came up with was the Frankie and I really like in their notes that they reference what I was talking about with um, it getting really easily to get stuck into feature creep when you're building ships because this ship has it all. It's got 37 millimeter close-in weapon support, it's got the two D80 Molots, it's got multiple thrusters, it's got very high speed um, for its size, it's got extinguishers, we've got Palash, we've got Flash. Does it have Palash? I don't think it has Palash. It's got Flares. Yeah, it's got no, no Palash. Um, it, it, it's a ship that I think while they've been while he's been while they've been building it, they've had to continually add more bits to keep it going. So we need more thrusters, we need more fuel, we need more power, we need more crew, and that's where you end up feature creeping a lot. You can also see um, in this ship some more signs of them using the cut out corner piece, which is in 1.14 the lightest hull piece, so there is a good reason for using that. And, and one thing I really like looking at this build is actually the use of the square, the one by one um, hull pieces as mounts for, for uh, flares, especially on the bottom here, it actually makes it look like a little turret, which I think is quite cool. Um, down, uh, pluses for this ship, it actually does have some advantages, like I said. Um, it's got the Sea Whiz, which means it doesn't have to worry about dodging missiles as much. So it actually has redundant uh, missile defenses, which I actually think is very important in High Fleet. You've got your Sea Whiz to deal with them as they come in. If you don't manage to get them, then you can launch flares. And if that still doesn't work, you can still dodge because this ship has a good thrust to weight ratio. Other things the ship has going for it, it has an almost a minute of extra combat time on the Audacity, which is not anything to shy away from. Um, but the downside really, it weighs an extra 811 tons, no missiles, no evac pods, no defense for proximity fuse, and it costs an extra almost 13,000 credits on top of the Audacity. So it's just a little bit too much on the size and uh, cost for me. One of the things I quite like about the squat that I didn't mention is that it is a very small profile, making it harder to hit. Whereas the um, Frankie, for having no armor, is a big ship and I think would suffer a lot if it got clipped by Proxfuse, the, especially the engines along the outside and left and the right there would drop off very, very easily. But it's a cool ship and I really like the design and I like being able to see Sea Whiz and two guns on a ship that can do 700 kilometers per hour. That's pretty cool. Um, so that's not the, the fungi. I've got these, this is the Frankie, yeah. Next ship up is the Toast. Um, the Toast is the fungi, but dialed back a little bit. So taking the best bits from that build from what I can see and putting it into a ship 
it's a really good ship. Honestly, it, it, it kind of ticks a lot of boxes. The only downside for me really is that it's a square and I try and stay away from square ships as much as possible. You can see the use of standard hull pieces as a blade of armor around the outside, which is a great idea. We've gone for the bare minimum flare launchers, just one, which is all you really need if you know what you're doing. I'm on the top of the ship here to protect it. We've got three D80 monots, which gives it a very big punch. It's a very powerful ship um, and that's really it. It's a little bit bare bones, um, but it has proximity fuse defense, which is big. It has a little bit further range, uh, extra 25 seconds combat time, which again, any extra combat time for me is a big deal. Uh, and it only costs about 6,000 credits extra. If I had anything bad to say about it, apart from aesthetics, which really isn't something I, I feel comfortable nitpicking on because everybody has their own designs for ships and, it, and it's completely, completely effective in what it does, is that it... Um, I've lost my train of thought, so obviously what I was thinking of wasn't important. It's a fine ship. Um, maybe it's just a little bit functional, but functional is nothing wrong with it, especially if it's the aesthetic of High Fleet. So the last ship to talk about from Bufa is the Fungi, which is the ship that they were going to submit as the audacity for the campaign. And the reason they did it, it's, it's a lot slower than the other ships they've submitted. You'll notice straight away that the speed is 553 kilometers per hour. And that is because it is following what I put in my Fleet Doctrine document at the end of the After Action Report, where I was aiming for 500 kilometers per hour. But I've refactored that between videos and, and I'm out now aiming for towards a 700. And again, I find it really interesting that they also targeted 700 with their other designs and only dialed it back for this ship. I believe it's called the Fungi because of these sort of growths of armor, a blade of armor that are here to protect it from proximity fuse, which I really like. Um, I think these are quite clever because the shots will get caught with the bits that stick out and I just think it looks quite cool. Um, we've got three D80 Molots, which is again, as I mentioned in the previous ship, a strong, powerful um, weapon combination to have. Three is a very big, a very high amount. I'm also very interested to see a mix of NK25s and D30 engines. So the D30 engine being the slower but more fuel efficient engine to combo with the NK25, which is a gas guzzler, but much more reactive. Um, the main reason that they've gone for 553 kilometers as their main speed is that that links up with a vanilla Skylark. And the idea was if I was to lose tankers, which they think I'm going to be doing, which I probably am going to be doing, and I pick up Merc tankers, I'll have a ship that can keep up with them. So it's a nice fallback. Um, and at 553 kilometers, it actually does outspeed most other ships in the game. The only ones it doesn't outspeed are the Lightning, the Slogger, and the Courageous, and we know how badly armored they all are. Um, the idea for it would be to sit much further at range, no, don't knife fight and just snipe out with the D80 Molots. It's a really good ship. It only costs 3,000 more than my current ship. It has more survivability. It um, has an extra 40 seconds of combat time and you could easily fit missiles into these side slots as well. I would highly recommend this as a starting point if you want something a little bit more protected than what I've gone with with the Audacity. Um, it's a very, very good ship. And I'm, thank you very much, uh, Blinky, for all of the ships that you've submitted. They've all been really interesting to look at and think about and I especially appreciate the write-ups you've done for each one. Uh, it, it's really made it comparing and looking at them really, really interesting. One last thing to point out with the Fungi is they've gone for the one flare launcher defense as, again um, and it's definitely something that you don't need multiples of if you can get away with it but for me knowing how my skill level is and where I tend to fall over when I'm filing my ships I definitely want multiples going forward. So this is all the ships that Blinky uh, Butcher has put forward for us. Moving on next we're looking at the ones brought to us by Azura Von Kayser. So the Azura Von Kayser ships come from a slightly different class. These are much heavier ships. I don't think these have been built specifically for this campaign. This is like their stock ships for the use in a similar role. So these ships will come across as slower, but I don't want anyone to think that because they are slower, they aren't going to be useful or as good ships. These are very well designed ships. They're very well put together. Aesthetically, they're very pleasing. Um, a lot of ship designers maybe look at some of the components of the ship and think, well, we don't need this, this unused hull piece here, but it's the kind of thing I like to see in my ship. So I'm quite happy to see them. So this is the Navarin Mark II and it clearly uses the Navarin, um, which is a vanilla ship as its inspiration. The first thing really to take away from this ship is it has two 130 millimeter main guns, sorry, 180 millimeter main guns in the, um, the Mark ones that are here. Um, this gives it a lot of punch. Um, it's a ship that is using reinforced armor on the outside to protect it from enemy fire so it can stick around in a fight for a little bit longer than the other ships can. Um, it's very compact and it has a very small profile making it quite hard to hit if it's sitting at range and dodging appropriately. It comes with Zenith which is something that I think these light ships are going to need a lot in this patch and it also mounts along the bottom two one-ton bombs. 
um, which I am thinking about experimenting with in this campaign. Because if you get that surprise attack on the enemy garrison, dropping one of these on a ship before it takes off can do extreme amounts of damage. If you consider how much damage the C-80 Special, the 250 kilo bomb could do, a 1000 ton bomb could do a hell of a lot more. In terms of what this ship picks up, we've obviously got the large caliber guns we've already spoken about, the increased survivability we've already spoken about, the two guns. It also has slightly more range than the uh, Audacity, which is something I think is important to point out, because even though it is 486 kilometers per hour slower than our ship, it can actually travel further. And that's something you don't see a lot of in High Fleet. It suffers a little bit on fuel efficiency just because it has no static thrusters. Um, and that could easily be fixed by just moving these bombs maybe out to some wings, putting some static thrusters in there. You could get a little bit more range out of it. But the bonus that it has is these engines are internal to the ship structure. Having engines sticking out the bottom does make them vulnerable. Uh, what else has it got? It also costs um, 13,000 more. Um, although no, I must have counted the price wrong because it actually only costs about 300 more than our current ship. So this is a, actually a really good ship to get for the price. 2100 21,000 when the um, Audacity costs 20,860 20, makes it a really good buy. And if you want something a bit more of a brawler, something a little bit more forgiving with really big guns, this is a good ship to aim for. Um, so this, I really like the Navarin Mark II, as you can tell. Moving on to the, I don't know why we've gone back to the fungi. This is interesting. Uh, we're going backwards. Oh, I know why I'm clicking on the wrong side of the screen. <laughs> okay, the next ship we've got from, um, Azura von Kaiser, wow, that's so unprofessional, is the Outlaw. The Outlaw, I think, may have been built in a previous version of the game. And the reason I th I'm thinking that is because it uses a lot of corner armor pieces, which have been increased in weight for this patch, but it's continuing the theme that I liked to see with the previous ship in that it has the two bombs, which we can use to drop on enemies. It has a good collection of engines spread out without the ship. We have a static thruster here, which is nice to see for a bit more um, speed and distance. And it manages to mount some seaways, which I think in a ship that's gonna be in combat for a while. And this ship manages to get away with um, a 191 seconds of combat time, which is huge. This ship can last in a fight for a really, really long time. Having this sea whiz is gonna be incredibly important to keep it in the air. I can also see it mounts a lot of flares. I think we've got six flare launchers on it. So it's really well protected from missiles. And it, it, it's, it, this is a brawler that's gonna stay in combat for a long time. It is significantly more expensive than the Audacity, but I think this ship, and I think it's easy to see, it has a completely different role. This is a ship that could take out a whole garrison, a heavily armored garrison on its own through a war of attrition that it's gonna come out ahead with because of the armor that it's got to protect itself. It reminds me quite a lot of the Paladin build that we had, mostly because of this sort of um, tilted up armor at the top, which is a very vanilla design, and I really like it because it acts as a shot trap, um, when it means you can have some exposed spaces here. And the ship just looks like a good ship to fly. I'm actually a bit sad that I wasn't able to get hold of the ship files for these ships, because I definitely would have taken them all out for a spin in the ship designer, just to see how they felt and give my impressions on, on how they were to fly as well. Um, I've also just noticed the ship has Palash, which is great. Um, could just see Palash as, to back the armor up. Um, it's, a, it's a good little ship as well. And it's not that expensive at 38,000. Um, you could easily use this as the core of a fleet to go, to go a long way. And Kaiser has some really good ship builds for bigger ships that we'll show you when I look to build my cruisers and stuff later on. Um, one more ship to show you, which is the, um, the Servant, which I think in my thinking might be the closest um, ship to maybe suggest as an audacity replacement or, or to go into audacity. Um, you can see, I think of this as like a pocket gladiator. We've got three D8A Molots. We're very well protected in almost a complete shell of armor, but we're still got a decent speed of 338 kilometers per hour. Um, we're looking at 34 grand in terms of price, which isn't too bad. It's got the missiles that it needs, four of them in fact, which is a, a large amount uh, of missiles on a small ship, so it can really punch quite heavily above its weight, which is only 30 uh, tons, uh, 30,000, 33,000 tons, actually double the weight of the Audacity, which is pretty crazy to think of. It has a two minute combat time, and I think that's important to point out. Um, the Audacity only has 81 seconds of combat time due to the low fuel that it's got. So this is a very another very forgiving ship. Um, it can stay in combat for a long time. It can take some big hits. It can deal out a lot of damage with those three D80 mods, and it can last for a long time without needing to run out of fuel. 
Um, the last ship I want to talk about is one put together by Trifler or Trifler. Um, Trifler has a, a guide on Steam, which I'll put a link to in the, the bottom of this video, on how to upgrade all of the vanilla ships just to get a lot more out of them without needing to go too deep into the ship builder. Especially useful if you want to upgrade your ships while you're going through the campaign. This, the biggest change that they've made to this ship, apart from adding an additional extinguisher by the looks of it, is the use of spaced armor around the outside. So using these hull blocks here attached to the chassis of the ship, they've been able to create a almost um, armored shell out of reinforced hull pieces, and they've used these single pieces on purpose because they weigh the least. The triangular pieces, if you remember, weigh, weigh the same as a square piece. So you may as well use a square piece because it has a greater surface area, it covers more, more area on the screen, um, to create an entirely ablative layer that can be blown away in chunks without damaging the lightning underneath. And it still has an incredibly high speed at 610 kilometers per hour. Um, and we're looking at, uh, unfortunately we don't have a combat time on this screenshot, but we're probably looking at quite a high combat time as well. Um, so this is just a really good upgrade that I wanted to point out and just make everyone aware of the, the guide that is on the Steam um, Guides area. But it, it is a good guide to look through and also lots of really good concepts in there as well. Um, and that's really it for all the ships that I wanted to go through. Uh, with, there's quite a lot here. This is the Audacity. It is a ship I'm going to stick with. Um, it does look a bit of a mess when you look at this compared to how neat some of those other ships looked, but I really like it. It kind of fits, it definitely fits my aesthetic. It looks a bit messy. It looks kind of cobbled together and I like that. Um, the only thing I'm going to do between starting the campaign and you seeing the ship again is I'm going to go through and replace all of the two by one hull pieces that I've got in here with single one by one hull pieces to try and reduce their weight. Um, because two one by ones weigh slightly less and has more hit points. So just a little bit more survivability. If I wanted to be really on meta with this ship, I could go in and replace all of my square hull pieces, so this one here, these two here, with these cut corner pieces to reduce the weight there slightly. But I think I'm not too worried about that too much. I'm quite happy to leave it as it is. So that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. I just wanted to go through all of the submissions that have been made um, by the community that I was really happy to see. I think it was just something that, that's really cool and I really appreciate people putting these ships together, um, especially uh, the ships that had descriptions and write-ups for them. I really enjoyed reading that and, and what you thought about the ships and how you compare to what I built. And if people have ships they'd like to suggest for me to look at the other classes of ship we're building, please don't hesitate to reach out for them. I'll do a little video where I go all over Go over, go over them all once I've built my ship. Um, and if you can get me the ship files to import into the game, I'll definitely take them for a test spin to check them out. Um, but the next video I'm going to be recording is my fleet tender video. So first of all, I'm going to need a name for that class of ship. Um, it's going to be the Skylark equivalent. So the basic version will be fuel tanks and elan sensors uh, and our IRST passive information warfare systems to, to detect enemy ships, but I'm also going to look at building variants of that ship that remove that sensor package and replace it with a carrier deck for aircraft and a missile deck for A100s as well as tracking radars and possibly sprints. So I'm looking forward to making those builds, but if you have suggestions for those, please let me know. I'll check them out and I'll do a separate video on those to compare them with what I've built and just talk about the we know what's great and what's what how do they compare i don't think anyone's ever built a bad ship just how do they compare differently um, but yeah thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this and i'm looking forward to getting this campaign kicked off cheers